everyone. Today we're going to be talking about uh, Omron CP1H data conversion instructions. And we'll talk about these instructions within this uh, program of logic controller. Um, there's a, a whole series of, of these conversion instructions within the, the, uh, the PLC. We have uh, binary uh, BCD to binary. We have double BCD to binary. We have binary to BCD, double binary to, B, to, to double BCD. We have twos complement, double two, twos complement. We have 16-bit to 32-bit sign binary. We have data decoders, um, uh, data encoder, so multiplex and demultiplex. We have ASCII convert, ASCII to hex, column to line, line to column, sign BCD. We have double sign BT, BCD. Um, we have sign binary to BCD and we have double sign binary to BCD. We also have gray code conversion. And a lot of these instructions are basically uh, categorized by if you look at the numbering system. So if you look back at math instructions within the controller, what you'll find is that um, a lot of these will convert from one form or one numbering system to another. So what we're gonna do today is look at a few of these examples and here I am connected to my PLC and we're communicating and here's my first instruction here which is the BCD to binary and what I have is a BCD number I have 9999 and when I uh, turn this on what will happen is it will um, go on monitor mode and what it will do is it converts 9999 into 2F0F. Now if I were to change this number, we'll change that to uh, the number 1234. You'll see that because my instruction here has the at sign in front of it, it only will do the translation on a transition from off to on. So if I were to set this back off again, and then we'll turn it back on, we will then have the um, conversion take place, which it does, which changes into 4D2 hex, which is the equivalent to 1234 BCD. So that's my first uh, uh, instruction. We'll set that off. And the next one is binary to BCD. So here I have my binary, and we'll use the same conversion that we just did. We have 04D2. <clears throat> and what it will do is convert that into a BCD, which will be in data memory 2. So we'll turn that one on. And when we do, sure enough, what it does in channel 2 is, uh, data memory 2, is turn it to 1, 2, 3, 4, which is exactly what we expected. Now we'll turn that one off, and we'll go down to the next one. 2's complement. And 2's complement, what you'll find is sometimes in the older uh, controllers, you weren't allowed to really do with negative numbers very much. So what they would do is use the 2's complement and add the numbers together to subtract negative numbers. It's just that simple. So what we did, uh, a negative number, or the two's complement, is basically an inverse plus a one um, on the output channel. And more information of this can uh, be, be called for and looked at on our website at accautomation.ca. So in this example here, what we're doing is we're taking our source code and then we're going to uh, negate it. So what we'll do is, let's take a, a value here. Um, and we have data memory one. We're using um, 04D2, which is our, our converted uh, data from before. And when we set this on, what we do is the two's negative, or the, the two's complement of that number is FB2E. So what it's doing is inver inverting each of those bits and then adding one. And we can see those bits right here. So it's taking D1 here. And we're going to D4, which is right here. So it's inverting all those bits and then adding one to it to get our responding information. The next instruction we'll look at for these conversions is the multiplex instruction. And the multiplex instruction, what it will do or it's also called a uh, 4 to 16 decoder. What it will do is it takes a 
digit in one of the register words and turns on the corresponding bit in the resulting word. So here, um, we'll turn that one on. And what we're doing is taking data memory 5. So if we look at data memory 5 here, we'll see that it contains the value 8. And then what we'll do is we use a control word. And that, that control word basically uh, will tell you how many digits we're converting and where it's going to go. So basically what we're doing is taking all these digits here. And we are setting the bit corresponding to that digit in the... Uh, a resulting output channel. So if we, we see this here, here's number 8, okay, and number 8 will actually then turn on the 8th bit, which is this one right here, of the resultant channel. If I change that to the number 3, I'll put the number 3 in there, and when we do so, we'll look at um, where the three is coming in, which is right here. So there's the value three represented in binary. There's hex. And then if we look at where the bit setting, it's zero, one, two, and three. So it's the third bit that sets. So that's decoder. And a lot of the times these will be used um, when we're programming things like elevators. And elevators, they uh, can take a bit on and convert it and tell you exactly what floor number. So they use multiplex and demultiplex. So here's our demultiplex. Let's turn this one on. And basically what we're doing is just the opposite. We're going to take the highest bit in that register and put it on our resulting, resulting word. So basically we have our, our uh, sources. So here it looks at the word. It looks at the highest bit and then converts it and puts in the digit representing that bit that's on. So kind of a unique instruction. So here, data memory 8 is my uh, first source word. So let's look at data memory 8. It contains the value 9. You'll notice that um, the highest bit in there is 3. And so if we look at data memory 9, you'll see the output result is 3. So if we change this, and let's change that to the number 8. Okay, if we look at number 8, on data, on data memory 8, you see, right, now we have 0, 1, 2, 3, which is still the number 3. Let's change it to something else. Number 400 hex. Okay, and number 400 hex on data number 8 is right here. So we have 3, 7. So now we have 10 represented. And that's what we get here. We get the letter A, which is actually 10 in hex. So, very uh, interesting instruction, and again, elevator um, is where this is commonly used. ASCII conversion. Now, ASCII conversion will actually just take a, a four-digit hex number and convert it into ASCII code. And ASCII code is basically um, the ability, it stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. And what it will do is during serial communications, it transfers this information. And, and the four digit hex is represented by four bits. So what this instruction will do is represent that four bit uh, number by an eight digit code using the ASCII uh, hex chart, or the ASCII conversion charts. So here we'll take the data memory uh, 11 and we'll convert it into um, hex or into ASCII and we'll put it in data memory 12. We'll turn that on. And what will happen is if we look down here, so there's my data memory 11, which contains 1, 2, 3, 4. The equivalent hex is uh, for 1, 2, 3, 4 is 31. 
to represent 1, 32 to represent 2, 33 for 3, and 34 for 4. If I were to change this around, and you can see now it uses two channels because it's doubling up the, the number to represent that same code. So if we change this, and we'll change it to the number uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, what we will see is those numbers now will change, and again, uh, 5 represents 35, 36, 37, 38, respectively. All right. So that is the asking convert. And also within this instruction, you will see that we have a, a digit designator or and our control number. Digit designator. Um, basically, it's just our control number. It tells us how many digits we're converting. The first digit in the uh, destination that we're going to be putting in. And we'll also include parity. And parity is used when we talk about communications, especially serial communications. What it will do is it will count the number of bits on and determine whether or not it should be odd or even and add that extra bit in order for the communication to go. That way when we talk serial, it can pick up a, a fault and uh, tell you that the, the communication is no good based on parity. All right, the next one is we have line to column. This is an interesting instruction. What it will do is we'll, um, it will take a source word here and look at the number, the, the bits that are on and off, and it will set in the result wherever bit designation that we did, we, we specify, it will turn those bits on in sequence. So you see here one is corresponding to one, one there, one there, and then zero, etc., all the way up to the 16 registers on our destination channel. So in our case here, we have data memory 19. So there's my data memory 19. And regardless of what's in the other data memories, like data memory 20, you'll see that since we have it on, we specify the third bit, which is right here. And you'll see that we have, uh, we're using the source, which has contained FF. So the first eight bits is on. So you'll see here, starting at jet date, or channel 20, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 bits in that register. And then they are now 0 okay, for the next 8. What we can do is, let's change this to all. We'll go zero zero, or so FF zero zero. So we're just going to do the opposite. So that means that the ones that were on should be off, and the ones that off should be on. So we'll set that, and sure enough, that's exactly what happens. So here on my third bit, you'll see that my next eight bits here are on, which they should be. So we also have column to line, so we can take a look at a, row, a sequence of bits and convert that into a into a line to show what bits are on and off. And the final instruction we'll look at today, I'll turn that one off, is gray code. Now gray code, um, what it will do is it will um, convert a gray code into either binary or BCD for us. And the advantage of gray code is that every time that a bit changes, only one bit changes. So if this is on a rotary encoder, as we turn that encoder, only one bit changes at a time. So we know exactly where we are when we power up this unit again. So you can see here, I have a small chart. It gives me it's a four bit. And you'll see that gray code is only one bit changes as it goes, say, from one to two. And then from two to three. Whereas some of these other ones, there's several bits that change. So if we look at three to four, you'll see that we have three bits change here. Whereas when gray code, we only have the one bit changes. So that's the advantage of using the gray code uh, within the controller. So if we look at our example here, well, hey, we have control data here, and I'm just saying that I'm using um, four bits to convert. And 
we'll have the gray code and then the equivalent here. So let's let's look at this example. We had uh, seven in binary, All right? Um, So we have the seven in binary, and when it converts into gray code, we get the value five, and that was in BCD. Okay. So gray code, you'll come across it periodically. Okay. Now all the links and documentation can be found on our website at accautomation.ca, and this gives you a small taste of exactly what all the data conversions or instructions that are available in the Omron CP1H and there are a lot more especially when you're dealing with numbering systems so head on you can head on over that take a look at the manual or you can look at the uh, CX programmer for full documentation on all the instructions available within this controller now if you like this video and like to see more there are three ways in which you can help us out you can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just as you have you can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video. You can also go to ACC Automation CA and subscribe to our website. When you do that, you'll get notification every time that we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.